Hey, Proposy Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about how to make that sound in your head. And we're going to be talking about it like how you can diminish this problem permanently. I've seen too many videos where people sort of talk about this and they just sort of talk about it. There's not really a system given to you in a way that you can go and destroy this problem. So it's no longer a thing. And a lot of times people don't understand the issue at hand. So the general thing is you have a sound in your head that you would like to make and you know what it what it sounds like. You can picture it. And so now you're constrained by the software and your lack of knowledge to be able to make this thing. And you say to yourself, how can I overcome this? How can I make this sound that's in my head? And the most, the other common thing I see, especially with rappers is they'll have this like sound that their track needs and they are like mystified. Like how do I approach and get this sound? So we're going to be talking about this. So there are four basic stages overarching stages. Each of these stages has different parts to it, and um, but prerequisites, benefits, we'll, we'll talk about this. So first, you have to have a clear idea. That's main stage one. So you got to have the idea in your head. It might be a foggy idea. It might be an extraordinary clear, extraordinarily clear idea. Step two, you have a general synthesis guess. You have to have some idea of at least something you have to do to start making that sound. You have to have this and um, we'll talk about how you can improve this area. A lot of people at this stage, when you're brand new, it's just going to be a bunch of crap shoots. That's just the way it is. Um, unless you, you go through a course or something where they might be able to point you in directions. That's what my sound and synth basic courses are for. That's what sound design courses are for. And then we have experimentation. A lot of people um, do not spend enough time at this stage when it comes to sound design. They are looking for quick results. You know, you have that sound in your head. You're really aiming for that sound. I've spent hours and hours and hours trying to nail one sound, especially uh, kicks. Kicks, man, you can spin forever on them. It's just, it's. don't underestimate how long you should be spending at each one of these stages. They can be long stages when you're genuinely learning how to do something. And then we have experience. Experience is what happens after the experimentation stage. This is the edge that most people are missing. Um, it also leads to a way better general synth guess. You, This is like experience is how you super boost step two. And so let's go back to the beginning and talk about how you can destroy this problem because it's definitely an issue that when you're new, you we, we get this idea that there's some magic way to do this. There really is not. It's just... As you progress, they go through these stages, and as you do them more and more and more, the problem simply goes away. So a clear idea. A lot of people will think they have this sound in their head, and they can hear it. It's super clear. I hear it. Everyone, non-musicians, musicians, they're like, yeah, man, I can hear the music in my head. And that's really good. The more you can visualize it and realize it, the better. The thing is, though, it's in your head. It's not in reality quite yet. Not as, as far as something I can hear. And there's that means there's some blurry lines that happen that we tend to mingle up uh, with what goes on in our head. So, for example, you can hear sounds in your head that you will never be able to make in, as, as far as pressure waves in the air that I can hear. You can, you can hear sounds in your head that you simply cannot make. And it's, it's a pretty wild thing. I mean, there's all sorts of weird stuff. P there are people who taste sound, and it's all based on what's going on in the brain. So when we say clear idea, we also need to qualify our statement with a reasonable idea. I hear a bunch of people with just unreasonable ideas. A lot of the times, it's really more of a clear emotion rather than a clear sound if that makes any sense now some people you get you can get very specific and if you've listened to a lot of music which is one of the ways you can improve this to get a clear idea listen to a lot of music listen to a lot of sounds that uh, so that you get an idea of what is possible to make in reality and so that's the clear idea the other thing about the clear idea that i see as a misconception a lot is i've been asked to make tracks that sound uh, dreamy make me a dreamy track the guy wanted an arpeggiator with some reverb that, that was what he thought was dreamy. Other people, that means chords. I've, I've heard of things. People want it to sound like the wind, make my track sound like the wind, make my track sound blue. I mean, drop down below what you've been asked to make a track sound like because there's some pretty funny stories. It's just someone, it's interesting to see what people think the track needs and they'll come up with these weird ways of saying it. So you got to have a specific idea with a technique in mind. Otherwise, your idea is not clear and you are just going to be 
doing weird stuff. You're going to be trying to figure out what you even mean. So as soon as you've clarified your idea, usually the second step will happen on its own. You'll have some sort of a guess of how to make this idea become a reality. And so general synthesis guess basically means you have to pick a technique. Are you going to use subtractive synthesis? Are you going to use Harmer? Are you going to use a sampler engine? Maybe just a string synth with some interesting filtering is exactly what you need. You know, there's there's a huge number of things. And so you say, how can I widen my horizon on general synth guessing? Well, the first way is you should just pick a topic, find a topic, Go through my, if you're looking for a good place to find topics, go through my playlists and just look at all the topics. They're organized by topic. Sound design with citrus, FM synthesis, wavetable synthesis, chorusing. How does a chorus work? I'm doing a whole new DSP series, which is going to approach this on like a way more deep level than anything normally goes because we're going to be building the effects. So there's just a whole bunch of additional things uh, that you can learn about that will enable you to get a way better synth guess. For example, if I wanted an old school drum and bass style chord thing, I already know. I would pick Harmer as my additive synthesizer. I would immediately choose some sort of a bandpass filter. I'm thinking of like a bandpass. So I have a really clear idea because I know what these things sound like. Go down, I take my volume down. Before I do anything, I know I want some pretty hefty unison, not so much pitch variation. And this is just going to be a fast little thing. But here we go. Here's my sound, right? And uh, maybe not that high, a little lower. And so that was like a major chord. So this comes into things like music theory, songwriting. A lot of sound design is actually intertwined with songwriting as well. You have a sound that you want, but usually it comes from a song. And so you have a particular style you're thinking of. So for example, for drum and bass, probably thinking of some minor chords. And it might not be quite like that. I'd actually have some things modulating in real time to give me the girth that I'm feeling with some interesting sub and additional elements. Layering, sound design can get pretty complicated. And so you come up with a general synth guess. And a lot of times people are looking for the magic one patch does the whole thing. And I've tried those. Um, the thing about those is uh, they usually don't do the whole thing. Usually it's a lot of layers and you're working towards some sort of an ideal as your idea becomes clear because you're finding out what's possible, what's not possible. And uh, maybe you're, you have some sort of a bass sound you're going off of, but you have this sound in your head that's sort of related to it. You know, you're going back and forth. This is the experiment stage. We've come up with a general synth idea and you see it just flows. We have our idea and once we have a clear idea, it will naturally pull you to step two. And then we go into the experiments. We're already experimenting, thinking of different things we could do. We, I mean, we're just going. And this part, the his part, is the part that matters the most. Sure, these parts are important, but this part gives you the experience. This, These two sort of happen at the same time. So experiments, when you're doing this, you're just trying things. You're trying layers. And I mean, just give it a go. Do weird stuff. Grab the parallel processing. Grab a patcher. Start doing all sorts of madness. You know, just get into it and find a bunch of things. And you'll begin to find all these curious things that you may have not known existed. You'll find yourself saying, oh, I want some sort of a tweak here. And you'll have all these specific moves that you may not even remember why you did later because it didn't work. Maybe you're like harmonic randomness. Oh, I've, this is going to be the thing. And so something about the clear ideas is um, a knowledge, a knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is a general prerequisite. So the more you read and supplement yourself with manuals, the better your general synth guess gets and the better your experiments will go. So while you're starting out, a lot of these things are just gonna seem impossible at first. You're gonna start doing things and twisting knobs, but you'll begin to gain experience. It's that magic thing that allows people like me to get somewhere much more quickly than someone who's new it's in any subject. If, if you're experienced, that's why experience is such a big deal, is you've done the experiments. You, um, Someone who is experienced has done experiments. That's just the way it works. You've messed up. I've heard that professional is just a word for someone who's made a lot of mistakes in a particular area. So that's basically what we're aiming to do. And as you do so, you will find that your ideas become clearer. They're more crystal. They're more defined. You can easily identify techniques. Well, maybe not right away, but as you get going, you'll be able to say, oh, I think it was done with this, with this, all these things are going on. And that is the secret to making sounds in your head. 
And then as you do this, it gets kind of scary because you th- what you thought you had clearly in your head before, and I've met people who just swear they have some magic gift that somehow allows them to bypass these stages, all, all three. They just have the idea and that therefore should enable them to do this step that, as you notice, is not on here, uh, make the sound. They think, oh, because... I have this clear idea, make the sound should appear. That's just bogus. That's just simply not true. The make the sound step, if it's gonna happen, is in the experiment stage. And if your experiment works, then you've made the sound. Congratulations, you've got that experience. But if it doesn't work, you've gained experience and you go through this stage a couple more times and eventually get to the point where you can make the sound. So there's some things, there's some general philosophy things just about the way you should think about things. Don't freak yourself out into thinking you're some sort of like prodigy that's amazing at just thinking and making sounds without doing the work. Everyone's got to do the work. There are a couple odd exceptions, um, usually not in sound design. It's more of a um, prodigies with music. And I can think of a couple of blind people who, who can just hear music and play it. But if you read any of their stories, they went through a huge experimental stage. So I guess I can't even say that about them. Like, Oh man, I forgot his name, but he would, he could play any song you give him. And people wonder, how can you just hear a song and play it? They think it's impossible for them to learn. And the the reason is, uh, he spent hours and hours and hours and hours, literally he's blind. So he spent most of his life at the piano, hitting keys and figuring stuff out, training his ear. And he got to the point where, uh, when he explains it, it's kind of hard for him to explain it because he's worked so hard at, he's built so many connections in his brain that he just explains it as sound goes in the ear and he just, the song goes in and his fingers know what to do. And it's like really difficult to explain because the amount of experimenting probably stumbled across a number of things that there simply aren't words for. And so the experience is just off the charts high. Um, if I can, re- if someone comments, I'll try and uh, I'll put a dis- uh, link to that person because I can't remember the name right now. He's Hawaiian. So I can't remember. But anyways, that's that. I'm not sure if this is going to, I mean, tell me if you think this helps. If if this is what you were looking for. I mean, if you're looking for me to like go down and tell you how to make the sound that's in your head, that's impossible for me to do. It's in your head. And I'm not even sure if it's a clear idea. So this is this is the video on why I can't necessarily just sit down and make the sounds. It also relates heavily to how you make sounds that you hear elsewhere. It's the same process for both. It's kind of a, a interesting insight. So as you're making sounds, you know, don't worry if you don't have the magic gift of being able to tell exactly what sound goes there. Just get used to it. And that's where things like, um, I used to have a hard time deciding, you know, when do I need a sample library for this? And when do I need a synthesizer for this? What are the differences in the sounds and the tones? A lot of people don't develop this because the experimenting stage is rather low. People usually develop a, like a super heavily sampled work base or they develop a um, the sound design and it's interesting the people who do the sound design sound design takes more work than the sampling unless you make sample libraries if you just use them um, the sound design takes more work and so when you go over to the sample libraries you have a there are more options for you because you've come across all these techniques so yeah if you're looking for techniques to use I'll be talking about a ton of them in my DSP series pick a sound design series learn a synthesizer read a manual find a manual on synthesis synthesis techniques um, if you're into math, there's a lot of math to describe a lot of these things that is actually pretty useful for, um, it's it's very useful for understanding what goes on in the synth and gives you a more powerful grip on sound design. That's like, if you get in, if you want to read, like, if you're looking for topics like that, what are you talking about? I mean, like, have you ever looked up exactly why a exponential curve can be brought up and down like this? It's pretty interesting deal. And the stuff's pretty hefty, but once you understand it, your, your understanding of what goes on here enables you to do some very, very specific things. So you're a lot more accurate. Your, your clear idea begins to become a little scary clear. Uh, if you have any questions about this, again, let me know. Support me on Patreon. Subscribe. And have a blessed day.